If any of you have been following me on social media over the last month, you saw that I went to Sony Camera Camp. And I wanted to share my thoughts because right now I am vlogging on an A7 III, a Sony A7 III with a really nice lens. It's a 16 by 35. Just learned what those things mean this week because I'm not super smart when it comes to cameras. But we've been pretty successful on YouTube, I would say. And this is what we've been using, this camcorder. So I came up here this weekend to learn how to use a proper camera and then also make the decision, should I switch from this to what you're watching it on right now for all of our videos? So today I'm gonna talk about what I've learned this week and if you're somebody that wants to become a YouTuber and you've been thinking about it for a while, what do you need to buy? I'm gonna share my thoughts from somebody that's been a YouTuber for a while but maybe isn't your typical expert in the camera space but I would kind of consider myself an expert in making videos and telling a story and maybe having some success on YouTube. So anyway, let's review some cameras and talk about this. All right, so this is the camera that you just saw me filming on. Right now I'm just filming on my iPhone because I need to show you all the cameras that I've actually used this week. Here's the camcorder. Here's the Sony AS7, which is a pretty big upgrade. This is around $800. This one's around 3,000 with the lens and everything. This one's the RX100 Mark 7, which is, this is what a lot of family vloggers use because it's compact, you can just pull it out. You have the flip up screen, which is nice. This is one that we happened to use on a boat the other day. <laughs> this is not a very good vlogging camera, but doesn't that look cool right there? This is, a, this is a really nice camera. You could use this for vlogging, but this lens is ridiculous. This is like you're at a sporting event filming people. We were on a boat and you needed to get like 20 feet away from the person to even get a shot. Like some of the shots are beautiful. I'll show you some in here, but definitely not as practical. And you need a really, really strong tripod, like this little switch pod thing here. If you put a Joby on it, it would just fall over. But for now, for this video, we are going to switch to the a7 III for the rest of the video while we talk about my favorite camera. So for the last three or four years, this has been my go-to. It's literally a camcorder, but yet it's been, we've been pretty successful using it. And I have found a place for this nice camera that you're watching on now. Like, it looks beautiful. It's a really wide lens. This camera is beautiful for B-roll shots. I can do these epic slow motion shots with this one that I cannot do with this. But if you're somebody that's just starting YouTube or somebody that has a smaller following on YouTube and maybe doesn't want to invest the money into like a really expensive camera, this is the greatest vlogging camera that's out on the market right now. No joke. And even if you're somebody that's like a big time YouTuber and you're just going on a trip somewhere, this thing is awesome, and let me tell you why, because a lot of people might just go, you're ridiculous, why aren't you using a DSLR or a really, really nice camera? First of all, if you look right there, there's like some stabilization on this camera. So it might be hard to see that, but right there you can see it automatically has like, almost like a built-in gimbal. So if you are vlogging and you're being a little bit shaky, it's gonna move and kind of stabilize your shot a little bit so much nicer than I thought it would be. No knock on Montana, I've been to Montana before. The other thing that I love is it it is a wide lens, so when you are vlogging, this is pretty wide right now. Like for a camcorder, a lot of the other older camcorders that we use, in fact, the other version of this that doesn't, that doesn't have the gimbal, it wasn't wide lens so that whenever I was vlogging, I needed to be like this, otherwise you're getting this like close up shot right on my face, which nobody wants that. I don't even wanna see that. And so this one does have the wide lens, but at the same time, it has a 20 times optical zoom. If you know the difference between digital zoom and optical zoom, digital zoom is like you're just cropping in the pixels. You really could do the same thing in post that you just take the picture and you just like zoom in with the with your actual software. So if you ever are looking at a, at a camera and you're like trying to figure out what type of zoom it has, make sure you look at optical zoom because this shoots in 4K. That's the next thing requirement for YouTube. You better be making videos in 4K because if not, then why not? Why aren't you helping yourself? Yeah, so there's some ducks behind me. And if I wanna take this, I can zoom in on them. And there's a little duck. It's like swimming in the water. Some of them are like diving down, but you can see it's actually smooth, even though it's zoomed in 20 times all the way to there. And when I wanna zoom out, I can do it slowly and it's this nice panning out thing, or I can go quickly. But this has come in really handy, like when I'm at sporting events, I was at the World Series a few years ago, and there was this comedian that was dancing on top of the Dodgers dugout in between innings, and I thought it was super funny, so I took the camera, and I zoomed all the way down on him, and if you watch that video from the Dodgers game, we actually have this shot as if I was right down there. And with this camera right here, I love it, and it's great for these wide shots and stuff, but if you tried to zoom in on those ducks from here, you're not gonna get a very good shot because it's a 16 by 35, whatever that means. What, what a lot of people do, like people like say Casey Neistat or Peter McKinnon, if they're going to get that far shot, they take that lens off, they reach in their backpack, they grab another lens, they throw it on there, they twist it on, 
and then they zoom out and they get that shot. But then if they needed to hurry and switch and get their commentary on something funny that just happened, they'd have to take off the lens again and like put on a different lens and it's kind of annoying. Like so much so that this one right here, while it looks ridiculous, it would do a good job at capturing those ducks probably. This is like super intense, but honestly like the camcorder is gonna get it faster and do it better for you. If you've learned anything from me talking about this camera, the most important thing with making YouTube videos is telling a story. In order to tell the story, you gotta get the shot. If you're messing around, like losing your audio or switching out lenses or whatever, there's a good chance you're gonna miss the moment. YouTube's a little bit different than making like featured films and TV shows where you have a script and you have everything written out. The best YouTube videos are just authentic and you're filming stuff and you're able to capture the moment. As of right now, this does it better than anything else that I've seen on the market. Just as a side note, Will Smith, he uses this. If you watch James Cameron was filming something with him. And it was a little like tripod and he had the, the Sony camera. I've talked to Mr. Beast. He loves this camera. He's used it for a bunch of his shoots. This camera right here is nice and it works and I'm not trying to knock on that at all. For vlogging and capturing everything, if you needed one camera, this is probably the one to go with. And the cool thing is, while I was here, Sony even was like, that's a good camera. If you're vlogging, go for it. Is it going to get you the best shots always? No, there is definitely a place for nicer cameras, nicer lenses, even this guy has a place. But in my everyday YouTube videos, this is going to continue to be my go-to and uh, this one's gonna be some, what do you call it, buttery smooth B-roll. I don't know what the tech people call it, but I'm gonna take this with me on a couple trips that we're going on to get some cool shots of some electric cars and uh, some secret trips that we're working on. When you see those smooth shots, they're gonna come from this Sony AA7 III, but the rest of it's still gonna come from this. And the last thing you guys are probably wondering, you've seen this switch pod on here and then you see my Joby on here, which one do I prefer over another? If you are somebody that's starting YouTube and just getting going, I definitely recommend the Joby. The reason why is because it has the bendy legs that you can just like take and set wherever you need to go. You can still say it's not even, you can just like get, get it even with this little head on the top. If you wanna just wrap it around something and like still get the shot, you can do that, which is really cool. This switch pod, the thing that I, I do like about it is that YouTubers have made this, so I totally support that they are starting their business and coming up with a solution for certain people. I think this has a big utility on big, fancy, heavy cameras where there's, maybe they're harder to like vlog and hold. Ooh, this one's still hard, but it's easier with this because it's actually sturdy enough where if you took the Joby and put it on this giant, heavy camera, it would just collapse and fall and possibly break. Other thing is, if you have a flat surface or if you're in a studio, then yes, the switch pod can work. But you really need this right here. I'm trying to talk to you guys that are maybe people that are just trying to start YouTube or growing your YouTube channel that maybe isn't huge yet. Everything that you buy, you want it to be able to do the most things possible, right? Because your dollars, you want it to go a long way. With the camcorder and with the Joby, I think it gives you the best chance to spend the littlest amount of money but to get the greatest return in the features and the things that you're able to do. We got some friends that are coming over here to fly a drone and it's actually the people that sent me out here to teach me how to properly use a camera, Jenna and Justine. Hello! Thank you guys for letting me come here and to learn about cameras. Thank you for coming. And us personally, we haven't taught you anything. So thank you to Sony <laughs> yeah. for, for also helping us and supporting us. It's been awesome. Oh, it's so great because they have so many classes and like gear to check out because this yes. is your first time vlogging on not a camcorder. Don't you like the video on this? Isn't it like clear and crisp versus my camcorder? I felt pretty embarrassed when I first came here because there's really some professionals here that are like photographers, videographers, like the best, seriously, the best in the world are here. And I come walking in with this off the airplane. Should, but I kind of feel like I shouldn't be as embarrassed as maybe I was when I first came here. You shouldn't be. What do you think about in, this guy? Even in one of the classes, like they had the camcorder and they were showing it and they were showing you the different uses I for mean, it. I mean, didn't they even tell you that this is like the easiest thing for vloggers? Because the settings are incredible, the zoom is amazing, the stabilization is great. So honestly, like whatever camera you have, like you can definitely make use for it. I mean, I used to shoot on a camcorder actually when I first started. You would make <laughs> so, me yeah. use the camcorder to shoot you. And like the stabilization is incredible. It the is pretty good. The zoom is incredible. So I'm not knocking it. Yeah. I, I not support at all. it. So this definitely has its place and there's a lot of people if you're starting YouTube or if you maybe don't know as much about like ISO and exposure rate and like frame rate and all of those things, this takes that out of the equation and you can get the shot, tell the story. How often do you even use like a phone for any videos when you're like hiking Pretty and stuff? Pretty often actually, because a lot of times what I'll do is I mix so much different footage and so many different cameras. So I'll film on like this main, like super nice camera. And then when you're out and about, sometimes you just 
want to get the shot. So whatever you have with you, just use it, get the shots. And you can always try it in later at like sitting at a desk or a nice scenery situation. For sure, yeah. So I mean, I definitely just use whatever I have on me. If I don't want to bring a big setup, I'll use my phone or I'll use the RX100 Mark 7. There's so many options. Yeah, because the R7 now, ha or the uh, Mark 7 has audio input. So I'm that's usually true. so obsessed with making sure audio is good. So that's definitely one of the key things that you should look for. This, I, is, this is probably something that I would not be vlogging on. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't recommend that. I mean, I would be on the other side of the lake. I'd be like, hey. <laughs> I was on the other side of the lake, and Josh Yo had this on a Ronin S, which was insane. He had it completely stabilized, which was pretty impressive. Yeah, that was pretty cool. This it's, is probably not as practical, but it's, I don't know, it's cool to look at. And it's fun if you need to get some shots, maybe for photography or something that's far away, that could be okay, but probably not gonna carry that in your bag when you're hiking. What's cool. this little number? That's a switch pod. So I think it's great for cameras that are heavy like this because it's not gonna fall over and this is a thirteen to $15,000 lens. Oh, 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 don't, oh, don't let me touch it. <laughs> and then when you pick it up and close the legs, like throw Wait, those around. This is yeah. cool. It's cool. So you can vlog with it. You could like hold it. Gosh, like, like, like just, just hold you. the metal, just hold the metal hold thing. Hold the metal, okay. Yeah, like you're vlogging. Okay. So you, ah! Oh my, this is like, <laughs> you can see into my soul. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay, I know you guys came out here to go fly your drone, so go fly your okay. drone, get some beautiful shots. Thank you for letting me come. You guys are amazing. Thank you for yes, being thank here. thank you so much, it was great. And Sony has been so awesome to send me up here. And I hope that you've enjoyed the videos from here and let me know your thoughts. Like, do you own any of these cameras? Am I way off in my little thoughts here or um, does some of it make sense? Thanks for watching and also check out Authentic because he filmed all of the behind the scenes on this hey, shot. Guys. And he's uh, way better with the camera than I am. <laughs> Is this little ball. Thank you, bird, for coming in the video. <laughs> it's so loud. We've had drones, we've had birds, we've had everything. <laughs>